Hello everyone. First we'll open Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. I'll read from verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, that took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him, given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. I read to verse 11. Hello everyone. This is Pastor Yankook Park, who is ministering in New York in America. Since God has given me this glory, great glory, to share the word of God online, I'm thankful. New York, especially America, is where the coronavirus has spread the most. Nearly one million, nearly one million people has been infected. But through the prayer of the pastor and prayer of the brothers and sisters, the pastors and brothers and sisters who are in America are all fine. Especially where we are, New York is where the corona is most uh, severe. Till now, God has protected us. None of us, uh, especially from our brothers and sisters, none of us are uh, infected. Here at Mahanaim, we are at self-isolation. Gracias Choir, the music school students, that we are self-isolating here. Since we don't have corona, we thought that uh, we are passing through this well. But frankly speaking, when we go down to the downtown of New York, many people are dying. As we do the CLF amongst the pastors that we met, some of uh, one of them passed away. So the pastor's wife, it was the pastors uh, whom we, we kept a very good relationship. We were very uh, close to one another. Uh, but the pastor's wife was so sad, so we had to uh, have the funeral service online. And so things were difficult like this. But God has never let us in difficulties alone. Always through the difficulties, He has done His great work. And we can clearly see in our lives how God, He has clearly worked. America began with the Gospel. As it got far away from the Gospel, got corrupted. Because of the Gospel, because of Jesus, the country has become the, most, the strongest country in the earth. But since it, it has left the gospel and Jesus, now it got corrupted, it got sick, has become a country that is without future. God wanted to preach the gospel. God has sent uh, the pastors here in America. When I see the heart of the pastor, his heart towards America is really big. When I, whenever I hear uh, him talking about Korean, the times of Korean War, the times of Second World War, I can discover how, how uh, thankful he is towards the young American soldiers that are sacrificed. For a long time, we have been captured by a thought that we do well rather than the heart of God to be revealed. Only, only our heart has been here, so God was not able to work greatly through us. But through the, through the times of uh, CLF, God has led us into a new path. We were able to get close to many other pastors. We were able to deliver the gospel. We could discover how uh, how God was working greatly for the gospel. 
since the coronavirus uh, situation outbreak, it has it has humbled the heart of the Americans that God uh, that was high. I read in the news here in America since the corona situation, the Bible says God increased by forty percent. Since we are in here, since we are in Christ. We didn't, we didn't. We don't think about this corona as big as how the people outside think. But people outside are really captured in fear. I could hear that the Bible says got hiked by forty percent, and some states by hundred percent. So in the hearts of Americans, God is not uh, cursing them through this but rather he is leading them blissfully now since the way to deliver the gospel online got open through this situation the places where we could not go to the people that could not meet us uh, it was only that we had to get to them to deliver the word or they had to come to us to, to listen to the word but through online we were able to deliver the word So the foundations like uh, uh, like Facebook or Zoom or YouTube, we are able to deliver the gospel through this. We're so thankful. This isn't. It will not just end as a plague, but since it's the last generation, not only here in America, but also you know throughout the world. I'm so overwhelmed that God is going to work continuously, especially pastor's uh, seminar that we're going to hold next week. I'm so uh, thankful for that. As we are in a self-isolation, I've been together with Gershaw's Choir and Music School students. Every morning, the, the book on Tabernacle that Pastor Park has written, we read each chapter, uh, we we'll testify, we we'll share the word. And since the self-isolation, we have been having that time. Long time ago, I read this uh, book on Tabernacle, but to share the word, and as we read, and as, she, as we shared the heart, And the tabernacle signify Jesus, not only Jesus, the heart of Jesus that is revealed in, in this book is so graceful. As I discover more, though I live the spiritual life, I preach the gospel, I deliver the word, I could have this heart that I have been living without knowing the heart of Christ. So as we share the word, there are some parts that that grace me, so I would like to share it with you. Gates of the tabernacle signify Jesus Christ. All the hangings of the court roundabout uh, were of fine twine linen. The center gate is composed of the fine twine linen and blue and purple and scarlet. So the gate is made out of those four different uh, strings. So you are supposed to pass through that entrance to get into uh, the tabernacle and to meet the secrets of Christ. So Jesus has poured grace and we know that Jesus has worked for us, but we were not able to discover the true heart of Jesus. From outside, you know, we guess oh, Jesus might be like this. I think Jesus is going to 
do like this or be like this. I have this heart that we have been thinking of Jesus this way often. Though we have been serving Jesus for a long time, I have lived without knowing the heart of Jesus truly. Instead, I had this heart that Jesus must be like this or Jesus must be like that. People, if you know the heart of the Lord, when you try to have the faith, instead of you working so much for the Lord, what kind of heart does the Lord have for me? What does God want to do for me? If you come to discover that, your heart will be filled with great peace and rest and great power will be overwhelmed within your heart. I have this heart. So these four colors, blue, scarlet, purple, and fine twined linen. So the blue is the color that signifies the heaven. So it is where um, it describeth Jesus as God. So there are four colors for Jesus. And when you see in the, in the New Testament, there are four, four books of the gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Even these four books have, have not just written you know, the same story. It's got the special characters of Jesus in this Bible. What I'd like to talk about today is blue, scarlet, purple, fine twine linen are there. As I've just said, a blue signified book of John and has described it, described it the uh, Jesus as a, as a God. And, and the scarlet described Jesus as a human being, and that's a book of Luke. And purple is the color uh, of the cloth that the king wore. So it has described Jesus as a king, and it's a book of Matthew. And fine twine linen uh, is where the string is, is, is linked to the needle, and it will follow wherever the needle go. And this is book of Mark, it describes Jesus as a servant. So there are four different uh, colors of string. And amongst these four, it's been divided into two great groups. Book of Matthew described Jesus as a king. Book of Mark described Jesus as a servant. So the servant and the king, it is totally opposite. But these two have a strong connection. Once, as I minister here in America, so the short-term missionaries come from Korea. Whenever they come, a long time ago, there were many students that came just because they liked America. So they came and as they do uh, the works of the church, and some were disappointed, at, disappointed and they wanted to go back. So the, the big homework for us was that how are we going to lead these students well? So together with other pastors, so we went through many trials. When the short-term missionaries come, we would ask them, hey, what is it that you want? Oh, since we came here in America, we want to learn to speak English. So we began to teach them. You know, we, we would uh, designate a time. We began to teach them English. Sometimes, you know, some, some short-term missionaries, they say, you know, America is so big. And there are many famous places. We came here as a volunteer, but would like to visit them too. So from from New York, eight hours 
you know, driving distance, there's a Niagara Falls. I don't know whether you have seen this, uh, the, the fall. It's just the same in the pictures that you'd find in, in, in the pictures. So since these students wanted to get there, so we had to rent a car, we had to take them there, we showed them that. So for the students, it isn't bad that we do some things for them. But what is important is that we did for we did as how they wanted. If they were not thankful or they were not happy. So we took them for a tour, you know, when we when we go out together with them, then at that moment that they'll be they'll be happy but we cannot take them out all the time throughout the year whenever you know they don't do what they want to do you know they will not be happy even though we did that we did the other things you know we could not find the answer so one day we thought together with other pastors hey we really don't know what to do with them you know, whether we do this they would go whether we do that they would go you know, these students let us just lead them according to how we want. You know, we are pastors. We are not, you know, the guide, tour guide. We are gospel preachers. We are not English teachers. So whether we do well for them, they would go. Whether we don't do well for them, they would go. So we had no other way. We just thought that let us do as how we want to do. Then, back then, we had many events, you know, there was uh, the Pastor Park's uh, crusade twice in a year, and many other functions were there. So throughout the whole year, the, the short-term missionaries would witness and they would preach the gospel. You know, as we were to do them, the problems were the money that they had and the cell phones that they had. So this may not be democratic. From the following year, whenever the short-term missionaries come, we would find an envelope for each of them and we would tell them to put their money in, and cell phones, tablet, PC, and we would seal before them, and we would put, we would put them in safe, and before they leave, we would give, give them back to them. But these the students these days, you know, for them to leave their life without cell phone is nonsense, right? And when they when they were all scattered throughout America, it wasn't so good. So I gathered them in one place together, and we moved together to witness in one city. We would go to another city, we would witness there. So, you know, if the students were able to be in each city as they uh, individually, you know, their life, the life quality would be high. But since they were all together, the, the living quality was, uh, wasn't so good. When they first come, in the first few months is a period of time where they get used to the system. First, first two months after after the period that they you know, go through, they all become so happy. And a long time ago, when they went on a tour as they wanted, when they learned to speak, when they uh, studied English as they wanted, they were not so happy. But on that year, you know, we did according to how we wanted. And I was so surprised to discover that they were all crying. You know, I thought they would complain, say, why have you suffered so much? You know, we were not able to use the cell phone. It was so uncomfortable. I thought they would complain, but they were instead they were so thankful. Whenever there is a function in Korea the, during the world camp and so on, when I come to visit Korea and meet uh, short-term missionaries, all of them would say in one voice, 
pastor, you know, during that period of time, we were so happy. We even miss those times these days. Or if you miss those times, you can come back. I will receive you. Now they will say, "No, pastor, it's not that. <laughs> no, we don't want to go. We don't want to go back." But we didn't know why the students were happy. Later, when we discovered the reason, the people want to live as as how they want to live. The people is even myself. When we want, to, when we do, we want to do things in the way that we want to do. You know, even the works that we want to do, every man has their own wants and desire. So people, as a king, they they want to live doing what they want to do. But in that, there isn't satisfaction, thankfulness, the joy. Then where, then where is joy, happiness, and satisfaction? And you will have them when you are being led. For a long time, I have. I thought that uh, you know we'll be happy and joyful when we do things the way we want to do. You know when I thought when did God work so greatly through me? In in my life, you know, there are parts that we consider beautiful, and there were parts of life that were dark and went astray. But what's in common is that when I've been led by the Lord, you know, here there is a fine twine linen that signifies the servant, that signifies the servant, that signifies the Jesus who was in the form of servant. It signifies the life of the servant where the fine twine linen is been threaded in uh, the needle and the life of a string being led by the needle. When I see the life, I wasn't happy when I, I, when I was a king of my life and led my own life. This fine twine linen, when it's threaded in a needle, and as it, when the needle led me, when the needle led the string, and as it followed, when God led my life, it wasn't that all that He led were the things that I wanted. It wasn't that I was happy with all the guidance. In times, I was complainful towards his guidance. But what's important isn't that I was happy with his guidance or not. My life, when I was led by the Lord, I was most blissful and I was most beautiful. In 1991, I left uh, to America for a study. And I, I went on an ambition. In 1998, I came back from America. My father called me, hey, you come back to Korea. You know, if I talk about back then, it is only disgracing me. I was really arrogant. As we are sharing today, you know, I was the king of my heart. Because I was king of my heart, I wasn't happy at all. I was leaving you know, the corrupted life. I was far away from church. I was far away from God. Back then, Pastor Yi Hong Mok was the pastor of New York Church. I had this trust towards the pastor. 
I only had a hatred heart towards the pastor. When my father called me, hey, you come back to Korea. Father, why are you calling me back to Korea? Uh, Father, why do you only listen to Pastor Hong Mok Lee? Why don't you listen to me? And my father would say, no, I, have, I, I didn't hear anything from Pastor Hong Mok Lee. Why are you asking me to come back to Korea? This is will of God. And according to the heart that I had back in the stage, I could not understand why. Even though I did not want, and I came back to Korea not long after I, I joined military. I think it was Satan that gave me the heart. I'm sure that Satan gave me the heart. I joined the army. You know, everyone begins their life after joining the army and after this being discharged from the army. But when I was joining the military, you know, this heart that I this is this painful heart was I was depressed by the this painful heart. My life is over. So joining the army was so so much pain in my heart. Do I have any power? If you are born in Korea and if you do not want to join the army, you know you have to be so called son of God. But I wasn't that son of God, so I joined the army. When I think about it now, if you allow me to go back to that period of time, now then I would I would I would choose military, because whilst I was in the military, you know, God has blessed my life so much. You know, this time I am serving God with blessful heart and thankful heart, and it has begun all the way back from the military. You know, God has showed my figure and God has changed my heart. And after I got dismissed from the army, IYF got formed and led me to mission school and established me as a servant of God and gospel preacher. Until I stood before you today, God led me. The life that God led me was so blessful and beautiful. Many people want to become a king. Short-term missionaries, when they become king of themselves, they become so difficult. Whatever that they do, you know, they do it with difficulty. Just like a servant, without their intention, Later on, when we tell them to get on the car, they get on the car. When, they, when I tell them to go out to witness, they go out to witness. You know, they move without any of their own intention. But God has blessed and God has led their heart so happy. Jesus showed us this life uh, in advance. As a son of God, he created this earth and he has created a human and he has begun to move entire earth and heaven, even though he was a king. When we see in book of Philippians, he has humbled himself. Here in the Bible, it says so, right? Verse 7. But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Jesus was a king. Jesus was in a. Uh, Jesus was same as God. You know, he's a creator and he's our savior. The life that he came to the earth and lived. It was the life like a servant who has emptied himself. Jesus was able to do all things. He didn't do anything according to his will. He followed the heart of God through the guidance of God. Many places in the Bible, Jesus speaks 
saying that I will, I am not able to do anything by myself. Even to even his death, not by not by his will, but he was led by the will of God. So in verse nine. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. As Jesus came in the image of servant, he didn't uh, reveal any of his opinions, just like a servant. As a string is being threaded in needle, and it follows wherever the needle goes. Now Jesus lived an obedient life to follow the will of God. God has made everyone to kneel before Jesus, things in heaven, things in earth, and things in, even under the earth. As Jesus lived on this earth, you know, He showed us what kind of life really blesses us, what kind of life is really precious, what kind of life is really beautiful. He showed us what kind of life is really good for us. Many people want to become a king, and they want to do according to how they want to do. Why do people? Why do why do people feel difficult? Because things do not go according to how they want. That's why they suffer. They struggle to do things according to how they want to do. If things do not work out, you know they use bad uh, method, and they get. Discovered and they go through difficulties again. People want to do things, want to do things the way they want. And even myself, I try to live my life according to how I desire. But the life that God showed me wasn't the life according to my will, but the life of a servant. I put down my will, it's just like the string that has been put. Into the needle, and wherever the needle goes, I follow the life. The short-term missionaries, pastor, I really don't know. Back in the stage, I was really happy. I didn't, I didn't have anything. I went out to witness every day. When, when you tell, when you told us to sleep here, then we would sleep there. And the toilet was always. Full, and we had to find the 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 space time to use the toilet. We didn't have the cell phone. We didn't have our own room. You know the conditions. There wasn't any condition to make us happy. But I was I don't I don't know how why I was so thankful and happy. Forks. That that isn't the life of mine. But that was the life of a servant. And I told them, you were happy because you were led by the Lord, even though you are not the servant. I mean, even though you are not the short-term missionary, but if you live the life being led by Christ, then you will again be able to live happy life. The reason that you are suffering, the reason that you are difficult, is because you are the one who is trying to make yourself happy, because you are the one who is trying to do things by yourself. Even for you all, even for myself. For a long time, we have been guiding our life. You know, for you to become a king according to the norm of the world, you have to be high, right? So we don't want to be humbled. We don't want to be low. And if you become a king like that, it's meaningless. You know, you would rather be humbled. Jesus should exalt you. And you become a king. When you are being led by the hand of Jesus, you'll be able to rule everything just like Jesus. You know, he can only lead you into that position. 
The man who's got the strongest power isn't the one that's got all power. The one who empties the most, the one who lives really servant like life, is the one that's got the most power. The weakest man isn't because the person is a servant, because he is leading his own life. He, is, he doesn't empty himself but follows his ambition and desire. The person who lives such life is the weakest person. We can discover that. Through the tabernacle, through the Bible, and through the book of Philippians, hey, when I was on this earth, I did not decide anything by myself. I just followed the life that God had led me. As Jesus was being led by God, life of Jesus was so precious, so blessful, and so precious. We can discover that God has exalted that Jesus to, have, to be a king. Even our lives, let us put our lives down before God. The heart that you want to exalt yourself, put down all the heart that you want to do for yourself when you receive the heart of the Lord. I believe that the Lord is going to guide your life so beautiful. Now, I did not leave for long. I'm not a pastor that has ministered for a long time in, in this mission too. But when uh, there are times that I recall my life in the mission. Then I, would, then I would recall myself saying, when was I close to God? When was I happy? When was I thankful? When I recall. It wasn't the period of time that I lived according to my desire. The life that God has led me. Yes, there were times that I did not want to live the life of His guidance. There were times that I rejected. But when I lived the life that God has led me, I was so blissful. You know, 2011, you know, we began the cantata tour. You know, 2011, we had a lot of events. You know, for the first time, we had a world camp, we had a cantata tour. You know, together with the Pastor Park, we had a retreat in Dallas. It all happened in 2011. You know, in 2011, after the world camp in America, you know, the money that we had were all spent. Because it was our first world camp in America, so we had lots of construction. We had to f we fixed toilet, we, f we put uh, pavement, and we spent so much money. After the camp, the money that we had were all spent. Then the, the Karasha's choir uh, leader asked us to, to do the uh, Christmas cantata tour. Hey, America is so big. You know, if you are asking them to come and listen to us only, it's not good. We should, go, we should get to them to you know, deliver the word. And I told, I told her, you know, when I see the situation, we really don't have money. You know, it will be difficult for us to go this time, but next year we can prepare and go. So this year will be difficult, I said. About you know, what is what is amazing is that after about thirty minutes that conversation, you know, pastor pastor called me and said, "Hey, I heard that you'll be on a cantata tour, but I've I've never said that." And I and I told him, "No, no, it's not. It's not that we have decided. You know, we we are preparing to do it. Yeah, we are just thinking about it. Maybe next year, you know, we'll be able to do it." They say, "No." You do it. It's going to be so good. Oh, Pastor, we, we really want to do it. You know, we, we don't have enough money. and We want to prepare it. And we want to do it later on. No, God is going to give you everything. God is going to provide you with money. 
you know, when he was saying that, I couldn't, I couldn't say no. You know, I can never do it. I couldn't say that. Rather, I was telling myself, who say this to pastor? Because it was only the gracious choir leader and myself. I really didn't say that. So I thought, since pastor told me to do. You know, in my heart, I have so much worries. How would I be able to do this Christmas cantata tour? When we go out, where are we going to sleep? You know, where are we going to uh, do the performance? The, the, the regional churches are small. Now, in my heart, there were so much worries. But through Christmas cantata tour, you know, I am enjoying so much glory and thankfulness. You know, God has helped us in all things. God has provided in all needs. And frankly speaking, even cantata uh, Christmas gracious members, they suffered a lot too. You know, we had the bus, and in in between the tour, you know, the bus got broke down. It wasn't a big problem. It was that we didn't know much about the bus back then. So in the middle of the way, we all, we were left on the road the whole day, and the the choir members were on the road all day too. Eventually, we were not able to fix the bus. Rather, we had to call a new uh, another, rent another bus to take them, and that because they went through such a difficulty, we thought that they would not want to do the tour again. But instead, they were filled with thankful heart. They asked us to do. Again, I could discover that God has given us much grace through it. Last whole year, you know, we have given out Pastor Park's book, hundred thousand copies. Number of people that receive the book. So 60% to 70% of the people, they receive the book. Because some, they came in family. So if it's 10,000, then 6,000 6, to 7,000 people. There were some that took um, individually, but if they came in a family, they took uh, one in a family. So before, before more than 100,000 people, we performed and we gave out Pastor Park's book. No, if I try to meet people in time in my life, I'll not be able to meet 100,000 by myself. You know, if I had a power to decide, you know, I would never, I would have never decided to do it. Even, even till now, I may, you know, say because of this reason, because of that reason, I would not be able to do it. But the life that he led me to, it was burdensome, was fearful, and it seemed not possible. There were so many things were there, so many reasons were there. But when the string is is put in the needle, and it, the string is, string can only follow wherever the needle go. When I followed God, it was so beautiful and thankful and blissful. You know, what shines my life beautifully were not the things that I have decided, were the things that were uh, decided by the Lord. When was my life blissful? It wasn't through the things that is that was of me, but the moments that I was led by the Lord. That was when I was blissful and I was so happy. 2,000 years ago, Jesus came on this earth. You know, he showed us what, what is true happiness and what is true peace. It isn't the life that you live according to your desire, but when you are being led, when you became a servant, you know, wherever, wherever the needle go, and when the string follows the needle, that is when you are happy. Please do remember that Jesus eventually exalts you, and Jesus eventually blesses you. I will pray.
living our Heavenly Father, I thank you. You have given us this time to share uh, the word and have a fellowship. I'm so thankful. As we discover the life of Jesus, you have led us to think. For a long time, we have been seeking the life, us being the king, decide things by ourselves. Then we were suffering. But you have showed us how blissful life it is when we are being led by you and when you guide us. Lord, it has become the last generation. You know, we give up to be the king of ourselves. We now become a servant. And wherever, Lord, you lead us, you know, we will go. Lord, please be revealed freely through us. And please do guide us into that blissful way. I ask you and I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.